إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له Verily all praise is due to Allah whom we seek his help and forgiveness we seek refuge with Allah from the evils that we conceal and from the consequences of our evil deeds whosoever Allah grants guidance will never be led astray and whosoever he leads astray will never find guidance wa ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah and i attest that there is no god worthy of worship except Allah who has no partners وَأَشْهَدُ أَنَّ مُحَمَّدًا عَبْدُهُ وَرَسُولُهُ And I attest that Muhammad is the final messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم بسم الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته This is your brother Dr. Rayyan Fawzi Arab recording for Huda TV in the program The Da'wah Workshop This is the third episode titled The Objectives of Da'wah In this program we aim to gain more knowledge of Da'wah more skills, more abilities so that we can present Da'wah in the best manner And alhamdulillah in the previous episodes we have talked about Da'wah its types, motivation of Da'wah Are you motivated to do Da'wah or not? If you haven't checked it out, please check it out. You can find it on YouTube or you can find it on the Da'wah Workshop Facebook page. What are we going to talk about today? We are going to talk about the objectives of Da'wah. But before we delve into the objectives of Da'wah, let's just go back to the last part of the second episode when we said there are Da'is to good and Da'is to evil. A Da'i to good. A da'i to good is one who calls people to good. He calls them to do good. He calls them to love Allah, to obey Allah, to pray to Allah the Almighty, to invocate to Allah, and to believe in one God. A da'i to evil is one who calls to shirk, who calls to bid'ah, who calls to anything other than the path of Allah and the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa And we know what bid'ah is. Bid'ah is innovations, and there are a lot of da'is calling people to innovations. May Allah protect us. May he protect us. Ameen. So we want to make sure that we call people to good. How can we make sure that we do so? We have to look into the Quran and we have to understand what aqidah is. We have to gain the knowledge. We have to be sincere. And most importantly, we have to look into the stories of the prophets. Now there are different examples of da'is to good. One example is one who I love so much and I respect and he is Prophet Nuh alayhi salam. We're going to introduce the guests of today, insha'Allah. Then I will share with you a verse from the glorious Qur'an of Prophet Nuh and why he felt that da'wah was a strong obligation upon him. Dear brothers, salamu alaykum. May you introduce yourself. Well, uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, first of all, I'd like to express my pleasure to be a participant in this uh, stunning workshop of da'wah. Uh, my name is Ahmed, I'm 25 years old and I'm a teacher of English. MashaAllah, you're 35 years old? 25. Okay, great. <laughs> the pleasure is ours. Welcome, Brother Ahmed. Thank you very much. Ahmed, why do you choose to do da'wah? Uh, because uh, I love my religion. And because you, you love your religion, you want, you want every, everyone else in this world to, be, uh, to, to believe in what you believe in. So if you are a Muslim and you know that this is the religion of Al-Haqq, the religion of justice, the religion of everything good in this life, you want all other people in the world not to go astray, not to, to, to follow what you follow, to, to be like you, and to feel this, this paradise and this, uh, this happiness and the, the eternal uh, winning of Al-Jannah, uh, inshallah. So it's, this, is the, this is the religion of right. Great, that is a, an eloquent answer. Jazakallah khair, brother Ahmed. And may Allah make you of those da'is to good who are able to do da'wah in the best way. Yes, brother? Uh, Muhammad Farooq, uh, working in a uh, trading field. Um, uh, Sorry, working where? Trading field. Trading okay. field. Four years old, uh, from Egypt. Uh, I reverted uh, when uh, I was about uh, 22 years old. Uh, that was in America and you reverted when you were how old 20 years old so you were a Christian before no no I, I was uh, I was um, not practicing any um, okay yeah. so you are far away from the deen Muslim yeah. by name yeah. like many Muslims in nowadays yeah, yes yes okay so then you were 22 when you came back to the deen yes great and what was that one thing that made you start praying and start uh, focusing on this deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Islam. 
Well, it's very strange because, um, uh, you know, I saw uh, the Muslims, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, e not that many people see sees, sees this, that uh, the Muslims who are not practicing Islam properly, uh, they still have got uh, uh, Islam in their hearts and in their deeds. And I was impressed by uh, the Muslim community in America. Even the, they're not calling to Islam, but I was impressed by their deeds. So I started to uh, imitate them a little bit when they're praying and stuff like that. And uh, step by step, I, I, I find myself not to do anything except uh, being close to Allah, inshallah. SubhanAllah. It's like you put in a little effort and Allah does the rest. All you have to do is just want the guidance. If you want the guidance, then Allah guides you. Yeah? This reminds me of a story of a man who lives in Saudi Arabia, in my hometown in Jeddah. Uh, he is an American and he recently reverted to Islam at the age of 63. He is 67 years old. His name is Sam. Now Sam, when he first came to Saudi Arabia, what happened was his people warned him. They said, be careful when you go over there because you're a Christian, you're a non-Muslim. They may harass you, they may slit your throat or something. So then he got really scared and when he first came to Saudi Arabia, he hid in the apartment. He didn't go out. He stayed inside the apartment. So as he was in the apartment, he would hear the call for salah, adhan. And he would look out the window and see the people walking into the masjid. So every day he would see this happening five times a day. And he wondered, what's going on? So then he decided to go to the masjid and find out why all these people are going there. And subhanAllah, he knocked on the door and the mu'adhin opened the door. And Sam said, I want to come in. I want to see what's going on. Will you allow me? The mu'adhin greeted him with a hug and he allowed him to enter. So Sam sat down and he said, I want to sit in the back and watch what the people are doing. Will you allow me? He said, sure, you are more than welcome to do that. So then the people came in for salah, after the mu'adhin did adhan, the people came in for salah, Sam was sitting down, watching the people doing salah, performing prayers, and uh, rukur and sujood, etc, etc. So he sat down and watched this, then he went back home. He came the next day and he watched it again, then he went back home. He came the third day and he watched them pray, and after they were finished praying, he told the mu'adhin, I want you to teach me how to wash for prayer and how to pray, because I want to be a Muslim. And subhanAllah, Sam, the same day, or the next day, went to the Islamic Education Foundation in Al Hamra in Jidda, and he announced that he is a Muslim, he converted to Islam. SubhanAllah, he saw the Muslims acting by Islam, and he became a Muslim. May Allah make us of those Muslims who act by Islam. Jazakallah khair. Yes, Idris? Uh, my name is Idris, I'm from America. As on a previous show, I trained, and uh, I've been Muslim for about close to 20 years now and uh, accepted Islam when I was in the military in Mogadishu. MashaAllah, you yeah. accepted Islam when you were in the military? Yes. Great. And how difficult was it or how easy was it? Which one? Was it difficult or easy for you to accept Islam? For me it was easy. It was um, easy for you? Yes. How about your relatives when they heard that you were Muslim? Uh, I didn't have any problems at all. My, no problems. My, my what mother was the reaction? and father they didn't, didn't bother them at all. As long as, they, as I was being a good person, they didn't care. Okay. So their, their reaction was like, for me, life. I know some people have a difficulty, but for me, I didn't have any, any problems from family or anyone like this at all. Mm -hmm. You see, I brought this up because we have many uh, non-Muslims converting to Islam in Saudi Arabia. And these non-Muslims, when they become Muslims, what happens is they have a big challenge. What is that challenge? That challenge is when they have to face their families, when they tell their spouses, when the husband tells his wife, I converted to Islam. And you have so many stories of women uh, asking for a divorce just because of this matter. Oh, you converted to Islam? Then I don't want you anymore. I want a divorce. So he ends up leaving Islam. Why? Because his wife doesn't want him. So this is a big challenge. We ask Allah to help those new Muslims who convert to Islam. And at the same time, if you are a new Muslim watching this, please be motivated to continue to be a Muslim because Islam is the only way to paradise. Islam is your salvation. If you change your religion and become anything other than a Muslim, then you will be of those who failed. Because that is what is mentioned in the glorious Quran. Yeah, Brother Abdullah? Uh, Bismillah ar-Rahim, I'm called Abdullah Amir, I'm 25 years old and I'm here with you today. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. And where do you want to be tomorrow? Wallah well, Shaykh, yani for, for, and I have many reasons why to be a da'iyah, but two main reasons are to, um, like first, 
to be closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by knowing and digging more like deeper and like in his religion and like the philosophy of Islam and everything and second thing like to be the reason people like you know know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and like kind of being good and being happy it's like mm -hmm. you know those are the two things great so yes. to get to know the almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala your creator yes. your sustainer your cherisher your Rabbul Alameen yes. right your Rabb the one who puts you here, the one who allows you to breathe, to walk, mm -hmm. talk, you get to build this connection with Him, you get to worship the Almighty Allah, and at the same time, you invite people to do the same thing that you are doing. Mm -hmm. exactly. Alhamdulillah. Exactly. What's greater than that? Yeah? Exactly. Alhamdulillah. So we're going to mention a verse, or some verses in the glorious Quran, in Surah Nuh, of a da'i to good, a very inspiring da'i, and he is Prophet Nuh alayhi salam. Yes, brother? بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قال رب إني دعوت قومي ليلا ونهارا فلم يزدهم دعائي إلا فرارا وإني كلما دعوتهم لتغفر لهم جعلوا أصابعهم في آذانهم واستغشوا ثيابهم واستغشوا ثيابهم وأصروا واستكبروا استكبارا ثم إني دعوتهم جهارا ثم إني أعلنت لهم وأسررت لهم إسرارا فقلت استغفروا ربكم إنه كان غفارا يرسل السماء عليكم مدرارا ويمدركم بأموال وبنين ويجعل لكم جنات ويجعل لكم أنهارا ما لكم لا ترجون لله وقارا وقد خلقكم أطوارا ألم تروا كيف خلق الله سبع سماوات طباقا وجعل القمر فيهن نورا وجعل الشمس سراجا والله أنبتكم من الأرض نباتا ما شاء الله الحمد لله This uh, requires a moment of silence the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala very effective Allah Azza wa Jal Prophet Nuh alayhi salam a messenger and a prophet of the Almighty Allah 950 years conveying the message of Allah to the people Prophet Nuh did he give up? no many people get demotivated because the non-Muslim non doesn't want to come to Islam, so he gets demotivated. He says, I tried, it didn't work, so I'm not going to continue. Is this what Nuh salam did? No, he continued for 950 years. He conveyed the message to the people. He didn't stop. Now we're going to go over this verse by verse again, yeah? You're going to read it verse, then I will speak, I'll say it in English, inshaAllah. After the break, inshallah. So we will take a break. Dear viewers, don't go anywhere because we have something very inspiring to share and I want you to be part of this, inshallah. Jazakumullahu khairan. See you after to the break, after the break, inshallah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. قالوا أجئتنا لتأفكنا عن آلهتنا فأتنا بما تعدنا إن كنت من الصالحين له ملك السماوات والأرض وإلى الله ترجع الأمور ما رأوه أعظا مستقبل أوديتهم قالوا هذا عارض ممطرنا بل هو ما استعجلتم اذكروا أخا عاد إذ أنذر قومه بالأحقاف وقد قلت النور من بين يديه ومن خلفه ألا تعبدوا إلا الله 
بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته my dear viewers welcome back again to the third episode of the da'wah workshop we are going to talk about the objectives of da'wah as we haven't delved into it yet but we talked about an inspiring da'i a prophet of Allah the Almighty his name is Nuh عليه السلام and he was living for longer than 950 years but he gave his da'wah for 950 years and nothing stopped him and at the end of these 950 years at the end of this what happened only few people followed him some scholars say the number was so low it was less than a hundred subhanallah imagine this so on the day of judgment you have all these prophets with their ummah their nation you have a prophet who has like one billion people Prophet who has one million people, a prophet who has like one hundred thousand people, a prophet who has one hundred people, and a prophet who has one person, and a prophet who has none. Subhanallah. So th what does this tell us? This tells us that even if people don't respond to your da'wah, you should still give da'wah and don't stop giving da'wah. So let's go back into Surah Nuh again and read these verses one by one and translate it to English insha'Allah. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قال رب إني دعوت قومي ليلا ونهارا He said, Oh Allah, I called my people day and night. I called my people day and night. فلم يزدهم دعائي إلا فرارا And the result of me calling them to your path is that they ran away. No, wait, they didn't run away. They fleed. Yeah, there is a difference between running and fleeing. These people fleed. They went away so quick. They didn't want to hear anything. Yeah, Latif. May Allah be gentle with us. And every time I call them to your path, what did they do? Let's go one by one. What is the first one they did? Uh, again, please. The, this last verse, he, he said they did three things. Yes. The first thing is what? Great. So they put their fingers in their ears. Now this is bad, yeah? When, when you talk to somebody, if you're talking to your child, your son or your relative, and when you're talking to them, they put their fingers in their ears, you get so offended, right? You, you may even smack them on their face like, what are you doing, yeah? <laughs> but Nuh السلام, he continued to invite them, he continued to talk to them. And then, what did they do? Number two? This means they covered their faces with their clothes. They covered. I don't want to look at you. Get out of my face. Get out of here, Nuh. That's how much they hated him. That's how much they hated his message. Last but not least. And they moved away. And they were resistant to their disbelief. And they became so arrogant. 
so arrogant to the highest level. Subhanallah. May Allah protect us. Did Nuh stop doing da'wah? No, he didn't. Why? Because he knew that da'wah is an obligation and he knew the objectives of da'wah. Do you know what the objectives of da'wah are? Let's cover this topic, the objectives of da'wah, insha'Allah. Mm-hmm. I want you, Brother Abdullah, to tell the viewers one of the objectives of da'wah. Actually, like, uh, first one, to declare the truth. I to mean, declare the yes, truth, mashallah. To tell it. Great, we'll get back to this, yes? Uh, another one would be um, to convey the truth. To convey the truth? Yes. Okay. Well, uh, the third one is uh, to... Uh, uh, How about to get others to respond to the invitation with yes. words and action? Yes, exactly. Yeah? Words and action. Uh, number four, I suppose, is to, 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 to give glad tidings and warn. Wonderful. To give glad tidings and warn. Not only to convey the message, but mm-hmm. to give them good news if they accept exactly. and to warn them if they reject. Exactly. Yeah? So let's go back to the first one, and that is? Declaring the truth. Declare the truth. Yes. Now, if we go to the Quran, we will find a verse in the glorious Quran mm-hmm. where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhar rasul, balligh ma unzila ilayka min rabbik. O messenger, convey what was revealed to you from your Lord. Mm-hmm. What is this? Declaring the truth, mm-hmm. conveying it to the people. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to give you an example of how the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu and Abu Bakr as-Siddiq first declared the truth at the beginning of Islam. And subhanAllah, that is a very inspiring story, inshaAllah. The second one is? To convey the truth. To convey the truth. And we have some verses in the glorious Qur'an that talk about that. And one of them is? وَأَنزَلْنَا إِلَيْكَ الذِّكْرَ لِتُبَيِّنَ لِلنَّاسِ مَا نُجْزِلَ إِلَيْهِمْ and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and we have revealed this reminder to you, O Messenger, so that you can convey it to the people, perhaps they may be reminded. SubhanAllah. To convey the message, to declare the truth, these are objectives. Now there's something important here that we want to point out on, and that is, some people may have their own objectives, and their objectives are probably different than the objectives that Allah wants them to do, yeah? So for example, you may have a da'i who has an objective to, for example, give a speech to 1 million people or to 100,000 people. This is his personal objective. And it's different than the objective that he should be doing. Yeah? Yes. If he doesn't give a speech to 1,000 people, will this harm the da'wah? No. no. It's a personal objective, right? Yeah. But if he doesn't declare the truth, this will harm what? will harm the da'wah, will harm the deen, right? Yes, exactly. So there are personal objectives. Each one of us probably have personal objectives. And there are objectives that must be done. And the objectives that must be done are to declare the truth, to convey the message, to get people to respond with words and action, yeah? Exactly. To get people to respond with words and action. How did the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam convey this message and get them to respond? Did all of the people respond to him when he used to convey the message? No. No, no of course not. No? Of course not. Some people, most people, rejected. They didn't want what he came with, right? But he continued and he didn't stop. Why? Because he knew this objective. He has to fulfill this objective. This objective is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he said, وَالَّذِي نَفْسِي بِيَدِهِ وَالَّذِي نَفْسِي بِيَدِهِ This is a swear, meaning, I swear to Allah, لَتَأْمُرُنَّ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَلَتَنْهَوُنَّ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ أَوْ لَيُوشِكَنَّ اللَّهَ أَنْ يَبْعَثَ عَلَيْكُمْ إِقَابًا ثُمَّ لَتَدَعُنَّ فَلَا يُسْتَجَابَ لَكُمْ He said, I swear by him in whose hands my soul is in. You either enjoin what is good or you forbid what is evil. You either enjoin what is good and you forbid what is evil or Allah's anger will come down on you and you will call him and ask Allah to save you and he will not respond. SubhanAllah. This shows us how important it is to do da'wah. You either enjoin good, forbid evil, or this is going to happen. Yeah? What's going to happen? The anger of Allah is going to come down. Okay, it's okay. I'll just call Allah and ask him to forgive me so that his anger can go away. No, not necessarily. When it comes down, you will call Allah and he will not respond. La ilaha illallah. This is a serious matter, and this hadith is authentic. So we have to act upon it. How can we act upon it if we don't have the knowledge and we don't have the skills? 
That's why we have to seek knowledge and continue to learn how to do da'wah and continue to learn the hadith and ayat that are in the Qur'an regarding da'wah and regarding the deen in general for me to apply the teachings of the Qur'an. And we're going to get into that insha'Allah. So now I want to just delve into a hadith, another hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that talks about da'wah and this hadith talks about a camel, a camel or camels, all camels in this world. Who of you knows this hadith? Um, camels? Yes. Um, the hadith? If Allah were to guide you, someone through you would be more, be, better than uh, a, a red camel. Subhanallah. Mm -hmm. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, لِأَنْ يَهْدِي بِكَ اللَّهُ رَجُلًا وَاحِدًا خَيْرٌ لَكْ مِنْ حُمْرُ النِّعَمْ If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides one person through you, this is better for you than owning all the red camels in this earth. Subhanallah. Now, Red camels, do we know what we're talking about right now, yeah? yeah? Red camels are the most expensive camels. One of these red camels cost about a million dollars or half a million, sometimes even more, sometimes even up to three million. So let's compare the red camels to something nowadays that is red and, and uh, that something that people like to drive. What is that? Ferrari, Ferrari for example. A Ferrari or a Lamborghini, right? Lamborghini, yeah. So a Lamborghini is like what? Half a million dollars or something, yeah. correct? Mm -hmm. Roughly, yeah. Imagine if you get to own all the Lamborghinis on this earth. It would be too much for you, right? Yes. The Prophet Muhammad Wasallam said, if Allah guides one person through you, and doesn't have to be fully, gu fully guided. For example, let's say the person is a Muslim, but he just doesn't pray on time. So you came to him and you spoke to him, and he started praying on time. This is better for you, than owning all the red camels, than owning all the Ferraris, than owning everything in this dunya. Subhanallah! Just by what? By making that approach and getting him to do anything good. This is what the, is required upon us. We are required to do da'wah, we are required to enhance our skills, to enhance our abilities, and to follow the objectives. We have one more objective, or two more objectives, yes? We said two and there are two more. What are these objectives? Uh, make him respond to the call to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Respond. Okay. Sorry, come again? Respond. Make them to respond with respond. words and actions. Yes. We talked about this in the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Yes. Well, uh, the fourth one was to, uh, to, to give glad tidings and warn. To give glad tidings and warn. And we're going to wrap it up with this one, inshaAllah. To give glad tidings. Bushra. Did you ever hear the verse in the glorious Quran or any word in the v v glorious Quran that talks about Bushra or Bushra? These are the glad tidings, meaning the good news. If somebody follows Islam, if somebody follows the teachings of the Messenger of Allah Wasallam, then glad tidings to him. And let me share with you a hadith about the glad tidings. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, بَدَأَ الْإِسْلَامُ غَرِيبًا وَسَيَعُودُ غَرِيبًا فَطُوبَ لِلْغُرَبَاءِ Islam began as something strange and it will return to be something strange. So glad tidings to those strangers. Glad tidings to those strangers. We're going to talk about these strangers insha'Allah in the next episode bi'ithnillahi ta'ala. For now we're going to wrap it up with this. I hope you benefited. I hope you enjoyed. I would like to say jazakumullah khair once again to my lovely guests who have attended this, uh, this uh, program, webinar, seminar, whatever you want to call it. And I thank you and I say jazakumullah khair for those who are watching. Until next time insha'Allah. Barakallahu feekum wa jazakumullahu khair. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Bye.